Good afternoon. Can you hear me? I'm very pleased to hear an Itobi employee pronounce winery correctly. <laughs> um. <laughs> I don't actually care. In fact, my, my first real slide is, uh, is the pronunciation <laughs> issue. Like, like winery, not like wiener, but I don't really care. Um, this, this is actually, these slides are a presentation I did at OzCon. Um, you can find the slides if you go to OzCon and look for the presentation. There's all kinds of links in here that, that may be useful if you, are, um, if you want to find out more, get more help, blah, blah, blah. I don't think I'm going to do much, though, with the presentation. I, I may a little bit later. I'm going to focus on doing a, uh, a demo. So let's see if I can get if it all fits here. Oh, goody. Oh, good. OK. So I'm just going to run through quickly a demo of winery. Um, one, one thing is Laurent had mentioned uh, Web Inspector for Playbook. And I've seen that demo before. It's awesome. Um, so if he can get it running uh, sometime, hopefully he can uh, show p anyone who's interested. Um, that's real Web Inspector. That's what I call um, that real remote web inspector. This is sort of a, a halfway um, solution. So for the platforms that don't have real web inspector, which is every platform but the playbook right now, um, you, can, uh, you should be able to use this to help debug your, your web apps or your phone gap apps. So we're going to start here by um, to show you what's going on. There, there's, there's two two windows being shown. One on the left is the debug client. So this is where you're going to be doing your debug stuff. It would normally be running on your laptop desktop. It's just a web page. And then on the right is a simulator. So this wall, uh, you can actually use an actual device, but it's easier to show with the, with the simulator. So I'm going to launch an application here. And as I launch it, we'll see it's going to instantly connect to the debugger. There's going to be uh, some activity up here under targets, and we'll see the target connect, hopefully. Let me reload. Reloading often helps things. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, um, so we got that. That green is good. The the target is connected, and uh, the other panels here are straight from Web Inspector. So. Winery is actually built by taking the user interface for Web Inspector that comes from WebKit and sort of faking out the rest of it on the actual device. So if you're familiar with Web Inspector from Safari or Chrome DevTools in Chrome, it's the exact same UI. Some of the functionality doesn't work, but the UI is exactly the same. If you haven't used either of those debuggers, it's very similar to Firebug, so between all those, you've probably used one or the other. So this is the elements pane. This is probably the kind of you know, primary uh, page you're going to be doing work on. And it works, it works just like Web Inspector does. So as I'm mousing over elements here, we can see them highlighted in, in the target. And they're highlighted with rectangles, which uh, tell you uh, the border margin padding um, in sort of crappy colors. There's a bug on that. Um, then you can do some interesting things like edit text parts, and they'll, they'll show up here. Um, you can delete elements wholesale. And there's some other things you can do with the, the HTML attributes and their, their values. The other interesting things you can do here, mo more, most interesting things, are dealing with your CSS, which is you know, often a problem. You don't, your CSS isn't quite right or whatever. So here's an example where I have selected a H1 element that has a class. And so we're seeing in the CSS rules that there's some rules for H1, but there's also some rules for a blue class, which are essentially overriding the color in the H1. Um, some of the simple things you can do is just disable a particular attribute value. So we'll see if we disable that, that blue class that the default color green shows through. Um, and then other stuff as well. These, these aren't quite as good. You can edit most of this stuff. So if I change that to black, it probably wasn't real obvious, but, but uh, you, can, you can do some amount of editing here. 
Um, if you want to see all the styles that are sort of in play at once, there's this computed style thing at the top. So that sort of shows you everything not sorted by the rules that, that came into play. And there's, just for fun, um, you can see all of the possible CSS properties <laughs> um, that every element has. Kind of amazing. Um, some of the other stuff here, there's a metrics pane, and this will show you the actual numbers for the border margin, margin and padding. And then there are the properties on the DOM element themselves. So we can see on this heading element, we can see things like uh, inner text. And we can edit that as well. This is not a blue H1. So it's lying, I guess, now. Um, and that's about it for the elements panel. Before I leave, um, at the very end here is a console panel which lets you enter JavaScript. But the console panel actually comes up on all the panels. So, um, and this lets you type arbitrary JavaScript. And I am going to do my usual example here of getting the background color for the body and it's not set and then I can just set that to green and then reset that if I want to. So that just runs arbitrary JavaScript. You can create variables, access them later, etc. So let's go to the next panel. Uh, the resources panel. So this is showing some new stuff in in the last release, which is uh, 1.5, came out last week. There's some database support now. Um, the, we had local storage support before. And local storage, you can actually edit these, these uh, uh, values if you want to. Uh, the database support is new. I think this table is empty right now. Yeah. So if I click uh, one of the application buttons in my, in my demo here, um, a couple times um, and go back and refresh this database, we're going to see that it added some entries to the, uh, that table. So if you click on one of these tables, you basically get a, a database dump, all the rows and columns. The other interesting thing you can do here is that's selecting a, a table itself. If you select the database, you can actually run arbitrary SQL statements. And so in this case, I'm just dumping all of the date um, rows, all, the, all of the date values from the rows. And that should support fairly arbitrary um, SQL statements. The other thing I, um, we didn't really see, but uh, when I clicked, I actually created a new database. And that sort of automatically shows up. So it's kind of live. So that's what we have for resources. There's a timeline panel. And uh, in Real Web Inspector, this has all kinds of uh, events that it generates automatically for you, including painting and rendering and all this stuff. But we don't really have access to that. But there's some basic stuff that we do have. With the event panel, you have to enable the uh, capture of the events. There's a little button down here. So we're going to click that. That's a record button. Now it's sort of live collecting any events that might be being sent. So if I click on my button again, it's actually doing a few things. Uh, installing timers, making XHR requests, and then you can, um, you can do some uh, zooming in on events if, that, you know, if that's something you sort of need to do. Some of these events have sort of multiple states. So like for the timers, there's the uh, an event when the timer sort of gets created, and then another one when it actually fires, and you, then you can see all those values. Same for XHR, you see when it started and when it finished. And then there's a user level um, event creation mechanism in the console object. So it's like there's console, the console log function, which probably everybody knows. There's also a console, I, I think it's called mark timeline which takes a string, and if you run that, that'll throw an event for the current time into this uh, event timeline. So that can be useful if you, you need to see some of your own timing information. 
All right, so that's the timer. And then I already talked about the, the uh, console. So any questions so far, please interrupt. Yeah. Um, well, this is in support of the web SQL um, databases. So uh, I don't believe there's even any web inspector code available to do index DB. So in theory, I could write that and add that to winery. But I might as well wait for what the real web inspector guys to do it, and then I'll get it automatically, so I don't have to do the work. <laughs> like uh, the web inspector codes uh, 50,000 lines of JavaScript and 7,000 lines of CSS, which I didn't have to write. So um, the other problem is IndexedDB isn't available on most of the platforms, so it wouldn't even make sense to have it. So right now it's just Web SQL. Any questions? Okay, um, to get started with this, the easiest thing to do, let's see if I can find the slide, is to use the debug.phonegap.com um, website. And somebody went through this before, I can't remember, maybe Brian sort of mentioned it. Um, one of the things about using Winery is there's actually sort of three players involved when you're debugging something. There's the UI on your laptop where you're actually interacting with your device. There's the device itself that you're debugging. <clears throat> and then to allow those two to communicate with each other, you have to run an HTTP server. <clears throat> and that's what Winery actually provides, it's just this HTTP server that serves up the code that both of those things use to, to communicate with each other. Fortunately, the, there can be some issues getting that server set up. Um, it can be a little bit complicated. So the Nitobi folks have set up a server themselves that anybody can use. So as long as you don't mind having all of your debug traffic flowing over the internet, this is sort of your easiest uh, solution, at least to, to get started and figure out how this thing works. So it's super easy. You have to sort of pick an ID um, that uniquely identifies you. Um, you probably want to keep it secret because if anybody else uses that ID, then they'll be able to see what you're debugging. Or maybe you want to, and so you can actually give them that ID and uh, you can do some amount of collaborative debug. Type that ID in and they um, will generate the script source element that you need to add to your application. So this is part of the winery story is that you need to add some code to your application in order for the debugger to work. And the code you need to add is right here. So as, they're, as you type the ID in, they give you the exact line that you should paste into your code. And then you click this link and it takes you right to that web page that I was showing before. So this is a fantastically simple way to get started. And then to make it even easier, there's uh, as part of the um, build.phonegap.com, there's a little checkbox to, uh, to automatically add the winery script line to your application. Um, let's see. I've done this presentation now for a while. Oh, this, this would be good. So what's supported and what's not supported? I sort of went through what is supported. Common question I get from people is, um, why aren't certain things supported? So the things that we don't support are real JavaScript debugging. So you can't do breakpoints. You can't do uh, uh, pausing or stepping or anything like that. Um, Web Inspector has a boatload of uh, network diagnostics, so you can see HTTP headers from uh, requests and responses for all the network traffic going on. We don't do that. There's a lot of resource information that they collect. We don't do that either. There's profiling, which is, is useful. We don't do that. And then audits. And the reason generally we don't do these, um, in some cases we just haven't done the work yet. But for the really interesting cases like uh, debugging JavaScript, it's actually just simply not possible or it's very difficult because there's no API that we have 
to allow you to debug JavaScript. Where Winery is 100% plain old JavaScript, and so you can't really, there are no APIs to debug JavaScript in JavaScript. So there's, there's not a whole lot we can do there. And that's the case for most of the interesting things like the networking resources and uh, uh, the networking and the, the resource uh, capture that they support. Um, so again, the, um, this presentation, which if you can find it, maybe we can post a link somewhere as well, has a lot of links including um, on, on this page itself, the, the little link that you probably can't read is the only existing documentation on Web Inspector itself uh, that Google hosts at, at one of their sites. So if you are not familiar with Web Inspector, that's a great resource to figure out all the different things you can do. And there's probably a lot of things, even if you've used it a little bit, there's probably uh, a number of things that you don't realize um, that it can do. So uh, it's kind of fun to read. So any other questions? Okay.